Hey gang, in this video, we're gonna get you ready for the 1002 exam. Hey gang, it's Rob. If you've never seen me before, I'm from itmasterkey.com, and my job is to help each and every one of you guys get certified. So in this video, we're gonna go over the 1002 exam. Pretty much just some practice questions. So a uh, super quick breakdown. If you don't know what the A plus is, it's a two part exam. And it's usually one of the first certifications people go after when they decide they want to have a IT career. So you got the thousand and one, which is 90 questions maximum. Uh, you got 90 minutes to knock it out. And then you got the thousand and two, which we're talking about today, which is also 90 questions and 90 minutes. Only difference is, or one of the biggest differences is, um the domains that it covers right so on the actual 1002 that we're talking about today you need a 700 to pass so we're gonna go through a couple of practice questions tell you what the answer is and hopefully this is helpful to you so all i ask of you is that you like this video subscribe to this channel and share it with anybody who can benefit okay so um, right now, when I drop this video, I don't know uh, when it's going to be. Right now, it's No Shave November, so I'm trying to see what this damn hair on my face will do. Hopefully, it finally will connect. Anyway, nobody gives a damn about that, so let's go ahead and um, get into these questions. All right, so BitLocker is used to encrypt entire hard drives. The blank module must be enabled for it to work correctly. Which one of these? is the correct answer so the acronym for what needs to be uh, activated or on or even present is the tpm and tpm stands for trusted platform module trusted platform module it was is what needs to be um, activated that's what needs to be present so on and so forth all right, Mark is a systems administrator. He is adding users to the domain before he heads out for the day. When assigning permissions, he needs to use the principle of blank. So if you're going through your certification journey, I always um, implore people to go after the A+. Reason being is because it gives you literally a little bit of everything. So this is going to be a security question. When you are applying permissions, meaning what people can and can't do on the network and folder, so on and so forth, you need to use the principle of lease privilege, right? The principle of lease privilege, which means that you give them the minimum amount of privileges needed to do whatever they need to do. You don't want to give the janitor uh, full access because if he gets mad because y'all damn... Uh, not flushing the toilets he delete everything that's on the server makes sense all right let's see what's next up a vpn allows a user to secretly not secretly that's not what that word says that's what my brain said it says but it says a vpn allows a user to securely use public internet is that true or is that false is that true or is that false so uh, right now I am uh, trapping out of this hotel, right? And what I'm recording on right now, uh, I'm on a Wi-Fi network, right? A public Wi-Fi network. And I am using a VPN to secure the traffic. So if there's somebody that thinks they're smart, if there's somebody that wants to hack me, if there's somebody that wants to see exactly what I'm doing, they won't be able to do that because the VPN secures all of the traffic on my Wi-Fi. So if you're ever using public Wi-Fi, I would discourage it unless you have a VPN set up. Which of the following is most true about Windows Firewall? Which of the following is most true about Windows Firewall? Which one of those is mostly true? So this one is kind of straightforward. It's definitely safer to have it enabled as opposed to disabled, right? Good. All right, when setting up a wireless access point, 
you need to use the most secure encryption option. What encryption standard should you use? So when you're actually inside uh, the box or if you're taking it at home, make sure that you're paying attention to that stuff, whether it says most, least, first, last, make sure you pay attention to uh, those subtle things, right? So you want to use WPA2. That is the most secure out of those options on that list. All right, you are, you are a network analyst for BizCorp Inc. There are several devices that are unable to access any resources that are located outside of the network. You run the IP config command to find out the devices that have an IP address that begins with 169. What most likely is causing the devices to be unable to access resources outside of the network? So this is um, a better visual representation or a better example of the structure of questions on the actual exam. So on the actual exam, a lot of times you're gonna get questions that are pretty long and it's gonna have a lot of information in it, but most of the information is unnecessary, okay? So what I train my students to do is pretty much decipher the information that they need and pretty much be a sniper inside of the test and know exactly what the other answer is, right? So uh, out of this, all you need to see is 169. Okay, one of the IP addresses has 169. Most likely, the DNS server has not issued those devices IP addresses. So, oh, I see. Okay, very good. I'm glad that happened. So uh, I read it too quickly, um, and uh, I said it in my mind, but I didn't actually look at the question. So the DHCP server has not issued uh, these device IP addresses. So even me, I'm supposed to be a pro, supposed to be super smart, and I got the shit wrong, right? because um, I misread it and I went too fast. So just make sure that you don't do that inside of the box. So the DHCP server is what dynamically or automatically assigns IP addresses. If for some reason the DHCP server can't assign an IP address to the uh, device, so on and so forth, it'll automatically get assigned a IP address and that IP address will get um, the first octet to be 169. So quick troubleshooting, 169 must be something wrong with the DHCP server, okay? Or something must be wrong with some kind of connection or issue, okay? All right. So a uh, simplistic definition for mapping a network drive would be what? A simplistic definition for mapping a network drive would be what? Okay, mapping a network drive sounds amazing it sounds super technical it sounds like you um went to harvard but it's something super simple all you're doing when you uh, map a network drive is you're just making a shortcut to a network share drive so a drive that everybody has access to if you map it that just means that you create a shortcut to it okay all right if you guys are enjoying the uh practice test with me make sure that you like the video make sure that you subscribe um, and make sure that you share this with anybody that can uh, benefit from it. So we're going to get a, a quick little break, a quick little message from our sponsors, and we'll be right back. To land an IT role, most likely you have to have some type of education. That education can come from degrees or even certifications. Speaking of certifications, over at itmagicky.com, our Zero to Hero bundle is still enrolling, helping people get seven certifications, three of the certifications being some of the most popular certifications in the industry. So if you're looking for some training online, got vouchers, hundreds of damn testimonials, helped out a bunch of people, head over to itmagicky.com. All right, gang, so we're back. So we just talked about mapping network drives. Now let's talk about Lamont. So Lamont is in a countryside villa that does not have access to high-speed internet. He needs to send email updates to his company's project manager. The only connection available is a dial-up connection. Of the following issues, what would affect Lamont's connection the most? Okay, what would affect his connection the most? Now, I've said this in almost all the videos, I think, but I'll say it again. Is this enough to uh, pass the exam? No, no sir, no ma'am. So if you're looking for you know, training, online training to pass the exam, 
and scrolling uh, on the bottom just had a commercial forward you can roll into the zero to it hero program so most likely or what would most affect uh, lamont's internet speed would be latency all right latency latency would affect his connection mostly because he doesn't uh have uh, the best connection and latency is just you know how long it takes uh, to get somewhere uh, things are late it's like a lag so on and so forth all right latency um, i don't know if i already answered it or not uh, another question is where the hell are these questions coming from um these are supplemental questions um that uh, i give to my students and the zero to it hero program i thought they went through the whole shebang bang if they're looking for you know a little bit of extra a little bit of extra oomph um, i'll give them these questions um to help them have another perspective but usually by the time they go through the program finish the final exam they're good to go but if they want some extra shit here it is so what does dns stand for what port does it use so what does dns stand for and what port does it use So DNS stands for domain name service or server, and it uses port 53. Which one is this domain name service? So um, another thing, like I said, gang, uh, set this up this way, because like I said, I even got myself earlier. Make sure that you're not moving too fast inside the exam because you may, oh, it's direct network service. No, it's not that. It's domain name uh, service. So just make sure that you looking at the question fully reading the answers and then choosing the correct one so the IP hold on the IP address ranges that are within a class C IPv4 IP address range are what what do we think so the gang if you don't know what an IP address is an IP address is just a device's logical address on the network just so we can know where to send data to and each class, A, B, C, D, E, each has a range, right? And the range for a class P IP address starts at 192. All right, what is described below? Sending a wake up frame or packet to a client machine from a server machine that has remote network management software installed. What is actually being described uh, right there. The definition for that would be wake on land. Wake on land. Let's see if I'm right. Fantastico. All right. When it comes to backups, what would be a best practice? Well, best practice. What would make the most sense? What would be most logical? What would be a best? practice when it comes to performing backups all right so when it comes to performing backups I think the most logical thing would be to back up after operating hours so people aren't doing things so people aren't turning stuff off unplugging stuff just to make sure that um, you're backing up everything you need to back up when you need to back it up. Lance is currently educating users about antivirus updates. He explains that updating virus definitions is of the utmost importance to ensure network users and devices are kept safe. What are definitions? So let's read through these. What is, okay, virus definition, a binary pattern, a string of ones and zeros that identifies a specific virus. A virus definition is defined as limits found in XML handbook. A virus definition is random code input and malware detection software. I'm going to say it is the first one. It's something that can identify specific viruses. And if you don't have those definitions up to date, then your antivirus won't know to look for that code, which correlates to a certain virus. What does time machine closely relate to? What does time machine closely 
relate to. So I'm going to say that time machine closely relates to, I'm going to say backups and snapshots. If it's not that, it's going to be restore and imaging preparation. But I'm going to go with backups and snapshots. Either way, whatever the answer is, I'll be able to break it down for you. Too easy. Great. So backups and snapshots correlate to time machines because both of these things can save the system state of your computer. And if something glitches, if something is corrupted, it can take your machine back to a previous time when it worked the way you wanted it to work. OK. So, gang, I want you to do something for me uh, really fast. Once again, I want you to like this video. I want you to subscribe. Also, uh, should be popping up somewhere around here. Make sure that you watch uh, my previous video that can also help you to get uh, certified. Uh, depending on when this video dropped, I'm hoping I uh, reach my goal. Well, it's probably going to drop that, so I ain't going to say nothing. So my goal for you is to, uh, like I said, share this video with anybody that can benefit from it, and hopefully I'll see you in class.